Hi everyone. In today's session we're going to be having a look at the graphics geometry menus inside of Paint. Whether you're inside of Flame or Smoke you both have access to Desktop Paint and when you're inside of the Paint menu you simply switch from the Paint option to the Graphics menu. This then brings up the Geometries menu where we can go ahead and start examining the different tools. The one thing to note about the Graphics menu versus the Paint menu is when you're using the Paint tool you are painting on a canvas so you're literally painting your brush strokes as you draw whereas the graphics menu basically gives you shapes that you can then mold and change how you want. It's almost pseudo vector shapes, it's not exactly a vector image but it allows you to manipulate it to a certain degree. Let's have a look at some of the options that you've got. To start off, when you're first working with an object, to the right hand side of the interface you've got the actual shapes menu. So you can see we've got lines, squares, circles, so on and so forth. So just to give you an idea, if I wanted to create a shape, I simply select the object I want and then with the crosshairs I would then just drag this object on the screen. As I mentioned before the difference is, is that when I create an object using the graphics menu you can see as I move it around it's a fully editable object versus the paint menu whereas when I paint a stroke there it is then committed down. Now you do have all the different shapes and every aspect of the shape is editable in 2D. So for example I can change the color if I wanted or we can change the shape, the size and you can simply use this little widget to make the adjustments. So you've got things like scaling, positioning, you've also got rotation as well. You can also click the center of it which will then reset it to its default path. You've also got the little crosshair which is right here in the center of the object and if I was to move this let's say to the corner that then acts as an axis or center point of the object so I can do different types of rotational type of effects. So those are the basics of how the geometry is created. Now down by the menus you've got a few things you can look at. Firstly you've got store and recall and what this basically means is I can take the shape that I've created I can store it into the buffer and if I was to delete it or work on something else when I hit recall it will then bring that shape back up and I can simply just tap on it to select it. You've also got an option here called tack what tack basically means is when I switch between the graphics menu and the paint menu you can see how my graphics disappear. This is because the graphics object is still a floating freeform object. It hasn't actually been painted directly onto the image until I either tack it down by clicking tack or by hitting process. So the one thing to bear in mind is when you're using graphics you do have to process the graphics unlike the paint tool where your paint strokes are instant. You can also, as you saw, go ahead and delete the shapes if you want. You also have got an edit mode, and the edit mode refers to how the objects are treated. So by default, when you first select, say for example, I select the circle object, you can see how the edit mode has now switched to add. When I go ahead and draw my object, let's say we draw a circle, you can see that it goes from add mode down to edit mode, and then I can continue to work. One of the things to bear in mind is you have all different types of hotkeys which control the different types of behaviors of objects upon creation. So when we want to create a circle we simply hold down the ALT key and drag from the center and this will then create my circle from the middle of the screen. So you've got the two options to either create an object from the top left or by holding down the ALT button it will then create it from the middle. Now we're going to go ahead and look at this in a little bit more detail so what I'm going to do is maybe just shrink the circle down a little bit we'll reposition it on one side of the screen and I'll just give it a color. What we can also do is add multiple shapes. So the way we'll do this is first if I select the square for example I then apply the square into my scene we'll also give that a different color and you can now see how the two objects are layered one on top of the other. So we can control the behaviors of what object is layered on top of another. The way we do this is looking at the edit mode. So we've looked at add, we've looked at edit but down here you've got an option called push and push basically means when it's enabled if I just tap on the topmost object it's get pushed behind the other objects. So just by playing backwards and forwards you can see how you can rearrange the order in which the objects are applying. The other option you've got here in the edit mode is the copy mode and the copy mode simply allows you to click on an object and drag a copy of that object inside of your scene. So you've got the various different ways of being able to use these tools. The other things that you've got inside here is you can control things like the attributes for example. So, so for example under attributes you've got control over things like the color, so solid color, applying a gradient or a circular gradient. The way that the gradients work is they are controlled through the color pop menu. The color pop menu is accessible as a bottom swipe menu down here. So if I swipe down 
you will see it gives me the pop menu and over here on the right hand side you can see the gradient that's occurring so if I wanted to change the color let's say of the gradient here I simply select the color that I'd like to use and I click and hold down you can now see how the gradient and that color will then be applied to the selected object swipe down to get back to the attributes menu and we can then continue from there now with these objects you can go ahead and do a variety of things so you've got attributes which controls their look you've then got transformation which controls their position inside of 2d space you can go ahead under the edit mode and also hide individual objects so if you want to work with a specific object you can hide the selected or unhide everything and then you've also got an animation control and the animation control when enabled simply gives you another swipe menu down here at the bottom which brings up all the channel editors for the various properties so every aspect of this can be animated so just to give you an idea let's say for example I was to take the circle we'll just remove this out the scene I'll take my square object and start animating it over time so let's say I just want to move it from one side of the screen to the next you can see how it's created the basic animation as well as let's say we want to animate the gradient over time as well so I want to start it there and then I'd like the gradient to finish off like so you can see that all these aspects are animatable so if I need to make various different types of elements various different types of things for my scene we can go ahead and animate this inside the paint tool having a look at some of the op the options you've got so say for example let's just stop the shape here in the middle of the screen and have a look at the shape attributes option under shape attributes you can see that the object is currently set to being solid this simply means it's a hard edged object just with a fill if we open this up and we switch it to wire you can see how it creates a wireframe now with the wireframe you can go ahead and increase the thickness of this wireframe but it keeps the edges hard so it doesn't actually change the physical edges themselves the third option you have here is the outline option and what the outline option does is it gives you access to the brushes that you have inside of paint so for example to get to the types of brushes if I swipe down once I get the color pot but when I've got the other options enabled if I swipe down a second time you can now see how the brushes then appear in the palette just to point out you will only get the brushes being appeared if your object is set to outline or fuzzy if you're using solid or wire you will not get the brushes appearing so swipe down once swipe down a second time we've now got our brushes so for example if I was to choose a different type of brush let's say the circle brush you can see how this object is now being applied from that brush let's just go ahead and remove the uh, the gradient off just so we can see this very very clearly now coming back to the brush itself you've got control over things like the size so for example we can increase the size of this and this will increase the size of the brush which in turn increases the way it's being applied onto my scene you can adjust different things like rate the amount of rate the pressure the jitter the direction the roll all of these values can be animated over time so you can see just by looking through the various different options it's actually quite flexible and uh, we'll have a look at some of the ways you can actually exploit these tools and create some really interesting type of animations so let's just go ahead and uh, reset everything once again and we'll have a look at uh, some of the other options you've got here so you've seen we've got uh, squares we've got circles ovals we've got triangles you then have this little interesting icon here and this is the freeform shape icon if I select it, it then allows me to go ahead and draw on the screen in a very free floating way if I want to you know create the object and finish tapping points I simply click down here in the gray area and this then creates my object which is then editable now this has created a shape that has been completely freeform based on where I've been clicking the buttons on the pen however what you can do is you also have the ability to take the freeform shape and define the number of points on that shape so for example you can see it says side six I want to create a shape that has got six sides and I want to create it in an equal or proportional manner in smoke it's the E button in flame it's the P button so if I was to hold a particular hotkey down and I now drag from the center you can now see how using the freeform shape it is now created an equal shape and in this case with six equal sides so I can go ahead and grab any of those sides and start making a change of that particular shape it's a very useful tool to know using either the E button for smoke or holding down the P for flame you'll get an equal object with equal sides the other thing you can do with this particular freeform object is you can change the way the curves behave on the shape itself so by default it's set to linear you've also got cardinal splines 
So cardinal splines allow you to adjust the splines in this particular method. You also have got the B spline, and the B spline allows you to pull it in a much more natural and organic way. You've also then got the Bezier spline, which gives you the tangent handles that you can then adjust. So you can see that it's adjusting the tangent handles, and the handles are locked. If I wanted to break the lock between the handles, let's say I wanted to create a corner here, if you hold down the B button and click on the control point, it will then allow you to actually then create a broken tangent, which uh, then you can move around and adjust. The way you tell between a tangent that is broken is looking at the solid line on the tangent versus the dotted line on a tangent, which means that the uh, tangent itself is still symmetrical. So these are some of the things just to bear in mind. Once again, everything that we do can be applied from all the other tools you've seen so far. So for example, if we were to take this and make it a fuzzy object, so the difference between fuzzy and outline is fuzzy will give it a fill as well as using a brush to define the outline. If I swipe down three times, once again, I can then apply that shape onto my particular object. So let's say we adjust the size of the brush, maybe down the rate a little bit, you can see the type of object we've been creating. So you've got real good flexibility to control this and then once again using the freeform object these control points can also be animated over time for example so if I was just to create this animation you can see how I can create some really nice looking types of graphic elements that may be used as part of my graphic design inside my scene so that's what you've got with the freeform shape the two other objects that you've got there is you've also got the fill tool now the fill tool I'm just gonna apply it and you're gonna see it being applied onto my scene one thing that you can do with the fill tool is it doesn't just work like the standard fill tool that you will find inside of the paint tool so under paint you'll see there's a fill option when you apply the fill using paint it is committed it is permanent however in the graphics menu the fill tool is a movable object what this means is basically the little crosshair that's been created with the full object is an editable object. So as I move the object around, you can see that it will fill non-destructively onto my object. Okay. In this case, it's creating quite a psychedelic effect, but there are certain uses that uh, you can apply with this tool if you're trying to fill in an object and maybe the object is perhaps moving across the screen. The final object that we're going to have a look at here is the text object. If I grab the text object, it creates a text tool inside of Paint. Now normally, you wouldn't really think, why would text tool be inside of Paint? Well, just to give you an example of how you can use this. So first off, before creating a text object, I'm simply going to choose the text menu here, and I'm going to write in a text that says My Blog. If I hit Enter, this then applies itself, and if we now click on the screen, you can see that the text gets applied as an object inside of my scene. Let's go ahead and we'll actually make this slightly larger so you can see the text quite clearly. You can also go ahead and do things, for example, we could go ahead and possibly change uh, the type of font that we want to use. So, so for example, we were to use one of the fonts that are installed on the system. If I was to uh, load this up, let's go with that one, that looks nice. You can see that you can apply this in the scene. You can also do things inside of the paint module with the text. For example, we can change it into a wire mode. We can also use the outline and we can also go fuzzy. So if I was to go, let's say, outline, because uh, outline is one of my uh, favorite ones we can use. And in this case, with the text, I'm just going to swipe down twice, and this brings up the brush palette. So let's say, for example, I'll start to select all the different brushes. You can see the type of result that we're getting. So let's go ahead and bring the size of the uh, brush size down. So you can see how we've now created this. And you can see how I'm now defining the actual outline based on the brush. So I'm sure you can see the potentials of what you could do with this. Interestingly enough, as I mentioned before, all of this can be animated. So let's go ahead on the first frame. I want to go ahead and say, right, let's uh, set the uh, jitter down to zero. Let's set the size to five. And then as the animation happens, we can increase the size of the C brush. We can increase the size of the jitter. And what I'll also do is I'll also go ahead and increase the size of the object itself. So just by creating this, you can see I've really created a really intricate type of animation. If I hit process, you can see the result being created inside of uh, the paint module. So it's very, very handy. If I exit out, you can then see how we've now created a graphic effect. One of the last things that we just want to point out here is that inside of the graphics menu itself, if you were to create any shape, so say for example, using the freeform tool, I'm just going to create an object like so, for example. And uh, with this particular object, let's say I make it a uh, Bezier spline. I'll just adjust it accordingly. And I want to make it outline so we can see what we're getting 
with that particular brush. Now you can also turn on open shape. So this just opens the shape and allows me to position it. What's interesting about this is if I wanted to paint something with this particular object. So let's say I wanted to use this in auto paint. One of the things that you can do is you can take the outline that you've created and convert it into an auto paint stroke by clicking on the convert option. Once this applies itself, I simply go to paint, I choose the auto paint option, and under user, I don't have to actually paint anything on the screen. I simply hit play, and if you were to choose animation and wireframe, you can see how that auto paint stroke has been uh, created based on the shape of my geometry that I'd originally created in graphics. So if I hit process, you can see that it's now painted that particular shape for me with the default brush of uh, the paint tools inside you. So hopefully graphics will allow you to create some really intricate type of animations, create any basic elements that you would then take, bring into action, and further enhance your composites. Once again, a slightly underused tool inside of Smoke and Flame, but believe me, it's very powerful once you get to grips with it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this, and I'll be back next week with some more tips, tricks, and more fantastic tools inside of the Autodesk System products.